Now, to get started, I'm going to basically create the four pages. We'll begin with page one, and we're going to create what is the basic underlying structure. So again, I'm not going into these concepts in detail, which you see here. That is why we have the playlist, okay, on YouTube. Now, I'm going to be using Dreamweaver. Again, you can use the editor of your choice. And I'm going to work with my root level folder. Now, you're going to see a lot of content in this folder. And that's because I have done a lot of different demos for the exercise. So I'm just going to continue to add to uh, this root level folder. And I'm going to label my files basically primer one, two, three, and four for the four pages. So I'm not going to call them index. I'm not going to call them by the required names. For this series, I'm simply going to refer to the four pages as primer one through four HTML. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. And let's go ahead and open Dreamweaver and we will get started. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to update. I have a different um, root level folder here. So, oh, let's see. Let's just go with, I'll call this, I'll just use my demo folder and let's go ahead and manage our site real quickly here. So demo, click on the pencil. I think I am going to 06, but let's just be sure. So we will go to the desktop, find exercise six, and I will choose, save, done, new HTML file, none on the framework, HTML5 doc type, create, save primer one HTML inside the exercise six, which is my root level. We will save. We'll give this a title exercise six. Structure Primer. All right, and we will save, and we are ready to write our structure. I'm gonna pause the video, write the structure, and then talk through it. I have added the main structure. Now, the beauty of this is we may all have this exact same structure, but that does not mean that our layouts, that our designs, have to look at all the same. These are only the boxes, the, the block elements, which hold the content. But how many other block elements or inline elements you place in each of these elements and how you lay those out, how you scale them, what content is in them, what images are in them, that's up to you, okay? this is not uncommon that, and when I say this, that a structure like this, it's not uncommon, it's a start point. So let's talk about what we've done. I am beginning with a generic block level div element, and you will notice that each element which we have created here has both an ID and a class. Now, it's entirely possible to target the element by the element's um, uh, name, okay? Or its tag, like div, nav, header, main, section, footer. But if I also provide an ID as well as a class, I can now use the ID to target this element possibly with some JavaScript, or if I want to uh, target this element with um, hyperlink to jump down the page. Then I have the class. I could use the class for how I attach the styles for how this element behaves 
or is um, presented on the page. Okay, so I'm starting off with the div. I'm going to use the div as the parent container. I can make this div 100% the width of the page or whatever absolute value. So I can set this to a relative or an absolute value or width based on my layout. Do I want something that is only 800 pixels wide? Well, if I do, then I can tell this div with either ID or class container to be that width. If I want my layout to stretch across the entire viewport or screen, then I set the width to 100% or 100 VW, viewport width. Now, the nav, same thing. So I'm not gonna go over this each time. You now know that we can target the element with its HTML tag, with the ID, or with the class. Now we will have the navigation of our page. The navigation can be before or after the header, which is most common, one of the two. It's up to you, okay? In my example, it's above. Then we have the header. We can also call this the banner or the hero box. This is the main graphic, which sort of uh, jazzes up your initial layout. Then I'm using the main element. The main element will be the parent for all the content on the page. Inside, I have a single section. You can have as many sections as you need, depending on how much content you have on the page or within the layout. Now the footer. I have the footer nested inside the container, so the footer will be the width of the container and whatever height I set it to. This is pretty common. Now you could have, or you can have the footer outside of the container, following the container. Now that really depends on if you want the footer to be locked across the bottom of the page and then the content scrolls from underneath the footer. That's up to you, okay? So this is pretty common and this is our initial structure for our primer for exercise six, which represents the underlying structure for our page. I'm gonna pause the video and then I'm going to write the CSS rules. I have now added the basic CSS styles. Before we review the styles, note I added language equals English. I'm writing my code in English for my HTML, so this is semantically correct. At this point, I'm including what is um, in, excuse me, document level CSS. So my styles are in the head of the document. Your styles should be in a linked CSS file. All right. So it's not uncommon that I start out or I begin with my styles in the head of the document and then I will externalize or link them, which I'll review here in a bit. Now, you will notice if you look at each of the rules, we are using the class, or I'm using the class, which I created for we, each of the element blocks. That's the strategy I have taken. You could use the ID, you could use the actual HTML tag to target. That is up to you. Now you will notice next that each of the styles, each of the declaration blocks begins with again a class and then each of the declarations inside they're exactly the same. I'm setting the position to relative width, height, margin, and padding for each to zero. This is going to make all of my elements be 100% the width of its parent and at this point have no margin, no padding, no uh, width and height. Okay, so the width is zero. Okay, so I guess it is being set to something not 100%, but we're going to change that here in a moment. I'll, I'll do that real quickly. Now, I have changed the width to 100% on all of the styles. And 
I've changed, whoop, I made an error right here, I'll fix this. Um, the height should be auto, the margin here should be zero. Let me fix this real quick. All right, I should now have the width for all the elements set to 100%, the height for all of the elements set to auto, and the margin and the padding will be zeroed out. And I still have this one wrong there. Okay, so now that's fixed. Okay, so I am beginning with all of my elements behaving exactly the same. It's the content we place inside which will make them uh, a certain height if we take this approach. Okay, so this is just that outline outer structure. Now, so you can see what's going on. What we're going to do is add some height to each of these and we're gonna add some color just so you can see how the um, elements are behaving. I have now added height to main nav, banner, section one, and footer. And I also added a background color. So we forced some height, we added color so we can see the elements in our layout. Now container and main content, their width will remain 100 and their height auto, so they will automatically adjust to whatever content is inside. So now visually, this is what we have. Our nav, our header, our section, and our footer, okay? Now I call this main nav, we call this banner, we call this SEC, short for section one, and we call this one, even as a class, we call this footer, okay? So we now have the basic structure to hold our content. What you place inside and how you, um, or what you add and how you position that, uh, that content, that's up to you. We're just creating that structure. Now, by taking this approach, you'll notice that we are creating a layout which is responsive. So if you position your elements inside using percentages or even viewport width, then you will have a layout which is responsive. So if you keep things really simple, then you can have a responsive layout without being overly complicated. Now, I would really encourage you to research or explore Flexbox, CSS Flexbox, and there are uh, there's a video playlist. And if you use Flexbox, uh, then your layouts will continue to be responsive if you if you choose um, to set them up that way. Okay, so something to think about. Now you're going to see this default space, this margin around. Um, the body of the document. And as we begin of adding other content, that um, margin and padding could potentially be added to those elements. And different browsers will make that spacing different. They, they add different amounts of margin to various elements. So what you need to do is you need your page to be interpreted almost the same or as similar as possible on or in different browsers. And we do that with a reset. We'll talk about that next.